We want to thank you once again for the privilege to be able to come into your home. Today we're talking with Father Michael Scanlon, author of a very important book that I know will change your life. We're doing a mini-series on his book called Appointment with God. Father, thank you for joining us. Thank you, and Harry. Can we open with a prayer, please? Certainly. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can know you, that you're not a hidden God that you revealed yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ, that you continue to reveal yourself through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you, Father, that we can meet with you, that we can talk to you, that you always hear our prayers. We thank you, Father, that you truly are a Father who cares for his children. And we offer this time to you that we may know you better and that we may become the men and women of prayer that you desire us to be through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, Father. And again, coming back to Luke 11, and uh, starts off, now once he was in a certain place praying. And in your book, you talk about the setting. Maybe you can just expand on that. Well, Jesus was in a certain place setting. Now, mm -hmm. many places in Scripture that certain place turns out to be a solitary place or right. off from the crowd of the rest. What's clear is that there was a certain definite place where he was praying, mm -hmm. and that was what was going on in that place, nothing right. else. Mm -hmm. And the apostles, the disciples were observing this. Right. So we and it... And then they approach him, observing mm -hmm. him praying in his place at a specific time and praying to the Father. And they say, oh, Lord, teach us yeah. to pray. You know, we, we, we want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when he begins to teach it. Now, the key concept in praying as Jesus did is to be definite, certain, mm -hmm. precise, I'm um, where you're praying, when you're praying, mm -hmm. and to whom you're praying. Now, it may <laughs> seem obvious to whom. When, where, and who. Right, right when, where, <laughs> or who. Now, and that, those are the three basic ingredients of an appointment mm -hmm. that you have with anybody. Yeah. If you called someone up to say, and said, Elizabeth, let's get together. Mm -hmm. Well, you've, that's the who. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to do two more things before you can get together. You have to establish the when, Mm -hmm. You'll get together and the where. Mm -hmm. And if you miss any one of those three elements, you don't have an appointment. Mm -hmm. And whatever you think might happen isn't going to happen necessarily yeah. except through happenstance. Now, what, what in your book you were talking about at home and the, the president comes yeah, in no. and wants to share Well, that. it's, uh, you know, we're, we're so funny. We don't treat God with the minimum, a minimum amount of respect we treat an ordinary appointment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you have an appointment, you set it up so that it's at this place, with this person, at this time, right. and you don't have a lot of other things that you're doing at the same time, mm -hmm. or else it's not an appointment with him, mm -hmm. it's just with something, everybody else. Right. And, you know, who's the most important person in the whole existence, the whole mm -hmm. being? It's right. God. But if it was just, let's just say it's just the President of the United States. <laughs> just right. Or if you happen yeah. to have trouble with the President these days, the Bishop, yeah, right. one or the other. Mm -hmm. So the President's at the door, and he's wanted an appointment with you, and he said that he'd have it in your house at 10 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So he comes, he rings the bell, you bring him in. And what if you sat him down and said, well, pre Mr. President, I hope you're not going to be distracted by the television show because I'm just making sure what happens on the news <laughs> and, and the, the sitcom. So, yeah. 
and and I oh, don't mind the dog that's sleeping on you, Mr. <laughs> President. He's just, um, you know, that's just Rover. Yeah. And those kids pulling on you and, and crying. Um, I, I hope that that's not going to in some way interfere with our conversation right. here. <laughs> oh, well, oh, and there's the doorbell. Yeah, right. And uh, I think I'm wanted on the phone, mm -hmm. so I'll be right back. Right. Now, what kind of an appointment would that right. be? Right. No, what we do, if you had the president coming, the house would be perfect. <laughs> it would look right. immaculate <laughs> at the door. You'd come in, the, somebody would be taking care of the dog. Right. <laughs> He'd be tied up in another room. The kids would have had specific instructions right. that... After they met the president, either they went away or they mm -hmm. were quiet in, in yeah. the c corner. You'd tell no telephone calls, mm -hmm. and you'd assign somebody to watch the door, and you'd give your exclusive attention mm -hmm. That's right. to Mr. President mm -hmm. or to the bishop. Right. Can we give God less? Isn't this yeah. the basic common really sense yeah. understanding of how you talk to somebody, or you listen to somebody. People say, I've never heard God in their lives, usually haven't given God a chance to break mm. through, through all the noise. Or they don't, aren't aware of a personal connection with God, but have they given the exclusive mm. attention, sustained right. exclusive right. attention to God? This is what's so important in our lives. So, if you're going to set an appointment with God, for prayer, it should be in a specific place mm -hmm. that's as solitary or removed from distraction as possible, at a definite time, mm -hmm. and having taken uh, precautions that it won't be interrupted mm -hmm. except for the most serious emergency, mm -hmm. but no ordinary interruptions, and it ought to be a mm -hmm. standard place that becomes your holy place. Mm -hmm. It's a chair. I have a chair that I pray in. I also pray, pray most of the time in the chapel, but I have a chair. And when I sit down with my Bible or whatever, and I just sit down in that chair and the crucifix is in front of me, my whole body says back to me, oh, it's time to pray, mm -hmm. because they know that's a holy place yeah. at a holy time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take any place in a house, any place in an office, actually, at mm -hmm. the right time. Yeah a day, and you can set it aside as your holy place to have a solid setting ready for prayer mm -hmm. so that when you get there, whether you're kneeling or standing or sitting, you don't have to start rearranging the furniture of the house or right. doing a lot of other things. It's ready to go. Mm -hmm. So set anybody time, can do that. Place. Anybody yeah, can I mean, do it. So you can just... Uh, I've never been you know. to a place in my whole mm -hmm. life where I couldn't find it. I've had to go to basements. Mm -hmm. I've, had to, <laughs> I've had to go out under trees. Yeah. Uh, but I've never been in any situation in my life that mm -hmm. where I got up in the morning, I couldn't designate, establish a prayer place. So you scout out a place if you're out of town the night yes. before. and just uh, figure out what you're going to do. do. And uh, I think this is so important. So, because we just did some interviews with John and Betty Kelly, their parents of 12. And Betty, uh, having a large family, but she would always be up in the morning at 4.30 in the morning. Wow, and that was yeah. her time with the Lord. Yeah. She would have her uh, her meditation, because her kids got up early, so she had to get yeah. up earlier. And yeah. um, that was just her time with the Lord. And she, it sustained her throughout her whole life. Oh, and yes. I think it so can be done It's uh, if we really set that, that priority. It really can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, parents get very... I've heard hundreds of stories in different ways the parents do it, even with, uh, sure, with a newborn, you have to pray when your baby's sleeping. Sure. But you can figure that out That's after right. a while. Yeah, Whenever it is, you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And if you've got some other young kids, so you know the particular things that can preoccupy them, mm -hmm. chores or right. studies or visits next door mm -hmm. or whatever, right. you can schedule them. You mm -hmm. can get your time. Once again, we time. haven't yet talked about how long the time is. That's right, yeah. But get it first mm -hmm. and get established in it first. Yeah. We just have a few minutes in this setting, but you, you say acknowledgement and, and praise now. That's, uh, well, let's get back to what, what would you do if the president came to your house or even if you went to the White House uh, to see the president? What would you say to the president? 
Well, I think, first of all, you'd greet him by his proper title, right. Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what would you say? Wouldn't you say, well, I'm honored to be invited here, or mm -hmm. I'm honored you came to me? Right. Uh, wouldn't you find something of value to say about the President? Mm -hmm. I appreciate your dedication, or I agree with your program, or mm -hmm. I... Uh, uh, I'm inspired by your hard work, or I'm amazed at the peace that you maintain. You would find mm. things of attribution or praise to say. That's just something that would happen normally. Mm -hmm. It would normally come out of your heart. And what that would do is establish the right relationship. You wouldn't be saying to the president, well, um, I suppose you're happy to meet me, <laughs> you know, or you wouldn't be saying, well, we both have the same kind of duties in life. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> you would place yourself in a lower position in terms of at least the office of president right. and the office of a bishop. That just fits naturally at the beginning of an appointment. Mm -hmm. Does so with God. To establish the right relationship and to acknowledge it and to give you a commitment of your internal self over to that is to say, Our Father, right. who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, praised mm -hmm. be your name. Your name be more glorious and wonderful than any name in the world, better than mine, better than all my friends, better than all the world leaders. I want your name first. I want to just tell you, Father, that you are the first above all things. I want to praise. I want to thank you for the blessings of my life. I want to thank you for salvation, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you that there's heaven and mm -hmm. that hell. You've got so much to thank God for, mm -hmm. to praise Him for, just as you would thank for an appointment, thank right. for a relationship. This is where appointments naturally start, and it's exactly where Jesus taught mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. that, uh, that we should begin right. in all our prayer with the praise and acknowledgement for all that's good that we see in God, and, and thanksgiving for all that he's done for us. So we're acknowledging who God is. Exactly. And, and there's nothing greater than a compliment we can give to someone than to thank them for what they've done. Well, Father, we're, we're uh, sure. run out of time for this segment. We'll be right back to continue sure. on with this exciting discussion. And it really is because, uh, you know, this the little book that Father has written, maybe you can hold it up, Father, you know, it's just a, it's sure. a small little book that's just right in your simple pocket. a little book. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Appointment with God, and the Franciscan University Press has published it, and uh, we have it available through the Apostolate, but I really hope that you'll write us about this book and use it, and, and it will change your life. We're back now with Father Michael Scanlon talking about his book, Appointment with God. Father, you know, just continuing on in this part, uh, acknowledgement and praise, why don't you just continue on with it? Well, most Catholics have difficulty with praise. Mm -hmm. They have to break from a, an attitude that they go to God to ask Him for something. Because most of our prayer is just petition. Yeah, it, it, it tends that way. And yet, what Jesus taught us, and what the Catholic Church has always taught us, is mm -hmm. that the praise is the most important mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, the whole first half of the prayer is just praise. Okay. We don't right. start right. asking for anything till the second half. Mm -hmm. And that's why priests and religious pray the Psalms in morning prayer. Okay. And as a matter of fact, the, the Psalms are the basics of, basis of their prayer, morning and evening. Mm -hmm. And those are Psalms of praise basically an acknowledgement right. and only at the end of the morning prayer is there time for petitions <laughs> there's no time in the beginning so it they go through it right. so the church has always taught this it's just that it hasn't been caught <laughs> <laughs> enough by people right, yeah. and yet your prayer the whole power of your prayer comes in the power of your praise what mm -hmm. is set in the power of your praise s focuses you right Right. If you have to keep talking about one person, even if you're talking about one thing, that focuses all your energy, so mm -hmm. all your things, and you're really in contact with that right. person afterwards. So as you focus on God and you praise Him and you thank Him and you give mm -hmm. glory to Him and yeah. you acknowledge His attributes, and you can do this many, many ways. I've written a little booklet, The Titles of Jesus, from the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I use all the titles of Jesus that clearly 
were used in the prayers of the first Christians, mm. and and I put them all in like alphabetical order, so that you can memorize them easily. Mm. And I use those titles of Jesus mm -hmm. frequently to pray. But you can use the titles yeah. of Mary you mean the in the litany that you would have in your prayer book, right? right. The, in the litany of Sacred Heart, use the yeah. titles, not so not much the, the pray for, for us. us. Right. Yeah, just go down the titles right. of them. Right. Um, there's so much that can lead you to praise. Even some of your reading, some of the things that stimulate you in a kind of fervent spirit mm -hmm. can lead you off in this section where you, where you in fact are telling God, oh, isn't it wonderful? Y mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're the God of miracles. Look at the mm -hmm. miracles I've seen in my own life yeah. and the family. Or you're the God of martyrs. Look at the wonderful witness we've seen of those dying for your cause or going to jail for your cause and pro-life or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you're the God mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, of the apostles and the prophets. Look at John Paul II. Mm -hmm. I just praise and thank you for the Pope John Paul II mm -hmm. and all that God's doing through him and Mother Teresa and the rest. You can, whatever gets you to praise God, focus, acknowledge, mm -hmm. and thank him. Oh. And it you can really only do it for... Uh, uh, it really does put you in a whole different... It changes disposition. you. Yeah, changes right, you. Yeah. You're, you're a different person after right. you do that. You're mm -hmm. out of yourself I think that's and the key. into God. Yeah, I, I, and that's the key. You're out of yourself. Otherwise, it, it, it's constantly focusing on self. Uh, yeah, yeah, to pray and, uh, all the time and talk all about yourself and nothing right. about God is you're yeah. going to only end up with yourself at the end of the prayer. Right. <laughs> Whereas right. if you're <laughs> focusing and talking sure. with God, you end up with God mm -hmm. at the end <laughs> of the prayer. Right. And that really that really makes a difference. So you're saying it and not only the Psalms and, and yeah. Use those and uh, in, in, in special litanies, in litanies and special and, uh, songs, even that glorify. Song right. is wonderful. He mm -hmm. sing a song mm -hmm. of praise about God right. or His work or His holy. Use the hymnal. Right. Sing, even mm -hmm. sing alone. It's mm -hmm. fine. I'm a mm -hmm. terrible singer, but alone, <laughs> I don't mind hearing myself if nobody else but right. God's listening. I figure He yeah, understands. Right, right. But true. you know, in Revelation seven nine, they talk about the the lamb on the throne and mm -hmm. they talk about the prophets and the apostles and the angels everyone's praising god mm -hmm. praise is what we're going to do for all eternity that's mm -hmm. what heaven's about mm -hmm. you're no longer going to be petitioning you got nothing else to ask that's for right. yourself yeah, i mean you may intercede for those yeah. who are still in heaven behind you but the whole focus could be praise and according to the book of revelation they're just saying glory and glory and holy 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 mm -hmm. is the lord the holy is the lamb that is slain mm -hmm. and all the heavenly hosts are doing it that's what we need to get into mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of so. mine says, if we don't do some of it, we'll have culture shock. If we <laughs> end up in heaven, we won't know what's going on. But I think we'll be ready for that yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. I think the, we got just 30 seconds left, Father, so maybe you can wrap it up in 30 seconds. What do you think? Well, I believe that, uh, that learning some certain standard ways of entering into praise mm -hmm. and then doing some extra more spontaneous ways is most effective. Mm -hmm. Have a prayer of praise that you start with every day okay. or have a particular psalms of praise to start every day or a particular litany that you know mm -hmm. focuses you in praise. Okay. Then add different elements each mm -hmm. day to that, including the personal thanksgiving for the things God did to you the other day. And that will get you in the right place mm -hmm. and get you ready for the next phase of prayer. Very good, Father. And we're going to be doing that yeah. in our future shows. We're doing this mini-series with Father Michael Scanlon on his book, Alone with God. And it's available through the Franciscan Press. Appointment with God. Appointment with God, I'm sorry. And uh, show him how small it is, Father. Mm -hmm. because There's nothing just, to it. You, know, you can put the, it in your pocketbook, right. in your pocket, <laughs> whatever. That's why we wrote it. It took a lot longer to yeah. write this than it did the big books. That's right. <laughs> because you had to boil That's it down. Right. Appointment with God. So write us about it. Thank you. God bless. to try.